Hi guys, welcome to art class. Today our learning target is I can draw a bunny like the artist Audubon by thinking about what the bunnies in my backyard or a park nearby look like, two, adding a background that is my yard or a park nearby, three, coloring my whole paper, so my bunny and my background carefully. So the artist Audubon was considered a scientific illustrator, which means that he made art about science. So his main thing was making art about wildlife. So he made art about birds and bunnies and all sorts of stuff to show people what they looked like. Because back in Audubon's day, you could not just hop on Google and Google what does a California bunny look like? Like we can now. You had to either go to California to look at the bunnies, talk to somebody you knew, or maybe there would be a picture in black and white printed in a book because the printing press had just been invented. So you had to do any of those things and then you might be able to get an accurate picture of what it looked like. So Audubon was super important because he was documenting or you know painting and writing down what he was seeing out there so that people would know what wildlife was living places that they were not living. So take this painting for example. This painting is of a California bunny. It says California hair, same diff. So let's think about some of the things that Audubon cued us in on. First, let's look at the color of the bunny. It's got black and brown and a little bit of white. The bunnies in Illinois are mostly brown. There's only a little bit of black in them and they have more white than this bunny. Another thing we, that um, some of my other second grade friends pointed out was that the, the legs are really long in the back. That's so that they can be really powerful hoppers. So let's see something else that Audubon was trying to teach us. He was trying to teach us where they live too. So let's look at the background around our bunny. It looks like cactuses are there and I see some mountains and I'm in Illinois and there are no mountains here, it is flat. And I'm not seeing many cactuses either because it gets super cold in the winter and it rains a lot here, which wouldn't be great for cactuses. So just by the background alone, even if we didn't know it was a California hare from the title, we would be able to say, mm, I don't think that bunny is from Illinois. So Audubon was doing a really important thing. He was teaching us about a habitat and about the animal characteristics. Double check, make sure that you have a piece of paper and something to draw with. All right, my friends, so the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna take the top edge of our paper and we're gonna fold it down to about the middle. We're creating three folds in our paper, so our paper will be folded into three. Here, you're gonna take the bottom part and you're gonna fold it up. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time. It's okay if they're not perfectly even. It's okay if they're not perfectly even. When you have finished folding it, unfold it so that your paper is portrait style. Remember, portrait style is up and down. So the first thing I'm going to do is in this middle box, because we have one, two, three, our paper is divided into thirds, I'm going to draw a capital letter Y. And I actually got this drawing idea from my dear friend, Mrs. Walsh, a very good art teacher friend of mine. So if you're watching, hi, Mrs. Walsh. Now what we're gonna do is we need to draw the snout. So most animals have like their head and then they have their snout where their nose is. So I'm gonna do a smile line and then I'm gonna go up around rainbow over my letter Y, back down and up. Then I have to draw the head. So that's why we folded this paper to make sure we have guidelines for where our head can be. So it's nice and centered and we don't accidentally make it like the size of a grape. So I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna draw a curve line right on that line. Oh, it's okay if we mess up a little bit. Down to the bottom line and up and around. If your head is a little bit wider than mine, that's totally fine. Every bunny is unique. Okay, now we're gonna draw the shoulders. I'm gonna make my shoulders go down like a waterfall down. 
and I'm gonna make them go all the way to the edge of the paper because if you don't, your bunny will be floating and bunnies don't do that unless they are coming up out of a magic hat. I'm gonna make my other bunny shoulder go down. We're making our bunny sit up. So he's not running, he's not um, laying down, he's sitting up. All right, now what you need to do is we're gonna draw the bunny ears. Now, depending on where you live, the bunny ears might be really long or they might be little short ones. It's totally up to you how you make these. I'm gonna make mine go really high up all the way to the corner of my paper and loop back. See, it kind of looks like a candy cane. All the way back. Other side, I'm gonna loop all the way up, all the way back. And then I'm gonna do baby loops for his little velvety, velvety ears. So I'm doing the same thing, big, then small, big, then small. All right, now what you need to do is we're gonna draw his eyes. Now, if you've ever seen a bunny up close, you know that when you look straight on at them, their eyes kind of pop out of their heads. They're kind of funny. They don't, they're not flat in there. So we're gonna draw his eyes like letter C's. Letter C. And look, my eye is not touching my ear. It's a little further down. You can make your eyes down further if you want, but don't make them touch your ear. Then I'm gonna fill him in, but I'm gonna leave a little shiny place, a little white place so it looks like the light is reflecting off of his eyes. And if you wanna do it a little bit differently, that's okay too. All right, now the next thing we need to add are whiskers and bunny tail. So for whiskers, they're on the snout. You will draw a few dots. Then I'm gonna use whisper lines. I'm gonna make my pencil or my pen or my marker, whatever you're using, nice and light. Do rainbow, rainbow, rainbow. We're going out. Rainbow, rainbow from each dot. Look at how my lines are nice and whispery. They're nice and soft, just like bunny whiskers, because they're kind of hard to see. Last thing we need to add is this cotton tail. We are going to use curved lines for this. We are going to go bump. And if you can even loop it if you want. Bump, bump bump all the way to the bottom of the paper. Oh, I almost forgot. We have to draw his soft little belly. Cause especially where I live in Illinois, they all have little white bellies and they're so soft looking. So I'm just gonna draw one rainbow to finish it off. Earlier we talked about how Audubon was educating people to think about habitat and animal characteristics. Let's use our bunny drawings to educate people around us about where you live. So I'm going to educate people about what I see out my window. You educate people about what you see out your window. So color your bunny the color of the bunny you see and color your background or around your bunny the habitat or where the bunny lives. I want you to document that like a scientific illustrator. I've got all my colors here. I'm gonna color my bunny brown because in Illinois, the bunnies that I see are mostly brown. So remember, when you're coloring, first you outline the shape. First you outline the shape with the color you're using. Once you've outlined the shape, you go back and forth and back and forth to color nice and neat. Back and forth to color nice and neat. And then I'm gonna do the rest of my bunny. You do not have to color your bunny brown. You color your bunny whatever you see out your window. I'm gonna fast forward it. All right, so I'm gonna make the snout maybe a little bit lighter of a brown. 
If you don't have a different color brown, then just push less hard. And I'm gonna make his little nose pink. And if you don't have pink, you can use light, you can use red and just color very lightly. All right, and I'm gonna also make his ears kind of pink. Remember if you use, pink is just light red. You just push very lightly. Now, the Illinois bunnies have a little bit of black in them. So I'm gonna go in through my bunny and add a little bit of black, just little lines. Give it a little bit of texture. This will make him look a little bit more real too. Now it's time to work on my background. So I don't have a backyard, but I do have a park right by my house. So what I see in the park, I see some trees, I see a sidewalk, and I see grass. So the first thing we need to do is draw our horizon line. Remember, it's where the sky meets the ground. And my park is pretty flat, so I'm not really gonna make a big hill. If you live where it's hilly, make a hill or make mountains in the background if you want to. And then I'm gonna color in my grass. I'm gonna fast forward this one. Now, I wanna add my sidewalk real quick before I finish my grass. I'm gonna make my sidewalk kinda curve around. Oh, it hops through the bunny behind now and it keeps going. So there's also trees and a playground at my park. So I'm gonna maybe draw the playground a little bit. I know it's got one of those big archy things and some bars this way. Funky bars. And it's got a place to stand up here, big blue poles. Maybe I'll draw a little pole there too. And then it's got a slide too. So maybe I'll put a slide coming out this way. All right, and then I'm gonna add some trees because my park has lots of trees. My tree is just like a curve line up, curve line up. Now we do not draw broccoli top trees in my art class, my friends. Mm -mm. Let's color in the trunk. And let's add a little bit more. Let's add another branch. So it goes walking beside, walking beside, it gets skinny. Let's go walking beside, walking beside, it gets skinny. Walking beside. So we're making it get a little bit skinnier as we go. It kind of looks like it's a, it's got spiked hair. <laughs> okay, now that we've done our walking beside lines, kind of like a snake, now all the way around our tree, we can now add the big puffy part like we did before. And my second graders, I know we've done this in class in the fall when we drew our um, one point perspective trees. Notice how I'm using a different green. We wanna use lots of different kinds of greens in our pictures. I'm gonna go bump, 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 bump. Oh, look, I'm going behind my bunny ear. Going down, now I'll go back up. And look, this bunny ear overlaps all of that tree, so I don't have to worry about it. And a bump, bump, bump. Now I'm gonna just color it in behind the tree, behind that bunny. Our tree looks so much more real than if you had just done the broccoli top. I'm gonna do a little bump there. Good stuff, my friends. Now, if you want to add more trees, you absolutely can. It's totally up to you. I'm going to go into my grass and maybe add some texture because we are all about texture. We are all about using lots of different colors in my class because our eyeballs are greedy and I know you guys can do better than you think. 
And then in my tree, I got a dark brown. I'm gonna add some different stripes in my tree, like the texture of bark. Some, just some curved lines. And then I just need to color in my sky. So I'm gonna leave some clouds. Here's how you leave clouds. You're gonna do bump, 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 bump. Bump, bump, bump. And look, my cloud is kinda, it's not round, it's kinda stretched out. So I'm gonna draw it in, and then I'm gonna take my colored pencil, I'm gonna lay it on my side. If you have a crayon, this will work for that too. I'm gonna shade it in. I'm going around my cloud. And if you want, you can give your cloud little shadows too by going in and just barely touching it. And look, I don't wanna leave these blank inside there because you can see the sky through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and color right over it. Look at how I'm coloring my whole paper. I'm addressing the whole picture plane. Oh my goodness, friends. We've got our beautiful bunny in our beautiful park. If you drew yours a little differently, that is really exciting and I want to see it. Please upload your pictures to my Google Classroom, my friends. Great job, guys. We added our yard or our park in the background and we colored the whole paper carefully. We hit all of our learning targets today. Guys, I had a lot of fun drawing with you today and I'm very proud of you for becoming scientific illustrators today. So, happy art making. Have fun. Think about the cute bunnies.